Hi everyone, good evening. Good evening. If you're joining in from Nigeria or from you know anywhere where it's evening, good evening. If you're joining in from another part of the world, <laughs> maybe good morning to you, maybe good afternoon to you. But it's really nice to be here. So hello to everyone. Hello to Tambari. Tambari was like the first person to get in. Hello to Faith. Hello to Favor Damilola. My namesake is here, Temi Lulua, Lady T Media, and to everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of this session. I'm really honored to see so many people who have come in to be a part of it. And I'm just glad that we're going to have a wonderful time together. So please, in the chat room, let me know your name. Let me know your school, because this is public speaking for students. So please let me know your name, let me know your school and your course of study. Now with your course of study, let me know how you greet one another. For example, I went to the University of Ibadan. So we greet one another as greatest UIs. Now, how do you greet one another? If you're from Unilag, you probably say greatest Akokite. If you're from Covenant University, maybe you say Eagle. So tell us about your school, uh, tell us, the name of your school, your course of study, and how you hail one another. Let me hear that in the chat room. I'd like to see the engagement and the conversation going on in the chat room. I can see the feedback here. A lot of people just saying good evening. So I'm assuming a lot of people, you know, it's evening all time. So good evening. To a lot of a lot of people who are in the chat room. So let me see the engagement. I really like to see how you you know greet one another in your location in your um. Okay, so I like to know your school. Pardon me. I like to know your school and your course of study. Your school, your course of study, and your name. Your school, your course of study. So I'm going to be reading. Uh, so many of them just flying by, but I see. Oluwatu Mininu Balogo, an undergraduate of mass communication at Olabisi on Obanjo University of Good State. And you say greatest OOUI and valent. Okay, my name is Bolaji. I can see Bolaji's on feedback here. Bolaji says, My name is Bolaji. Oh, I lost that. Uh, Bolaji, please post it again. Okay, so I see I see Jade Solaoni. My name is Jade Solaoni. I'm a student of Joseph Ayo Babalola University studying law. Okay, how do you hail one another? I, I see Bolaji now. Okay, Bolaji is Yanulua Bolaji. I studied microbiology at Joseph Ayo Babalola University. We simply say greatest job whites. Greatest job whites of the greatest job whites. I see Mary here. Mary says from a boy state university. I studied animal science, greatest Nigerian student. Okay, so you're going with the general one. You don't want to tell us how you heal one another specifically in your university. It's okay. I see Joy in the chat room, a student of Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe, studying soil science. Okay, you're studying soil science and you say, Okay, let me let that quickly come up. And you say, great if a students, great, greatest, that, 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 greatest, go, 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 go. <laughs> and you know, our greatest, she <laughs> And you know, I was in, I was in, I was somewhere, and you, a lot of the University of IFA students were there. And I said, no, this is the energy. The energy was so much. By the time they finished healing one another, I was like, wow, this is it. So, really nice to see you, Joy, and to hear from you. So please keep the comments coming in the chat room. I'd really like to know your name and where, you know, your university and your course of study as well. I see Daniel Damilola, a graduate of Mountain Top University. And, Dan and Damilola says, I never knew it's for undergraduates. Well, it's for students, whether undergraduates or postgraduate. But what, what I did eventually, because I had a lot of people ask me, can I still join even though I'm not a student? Can I still join in? And the answer was yes, you can join in even if you're not a student. However, the session is going to be focused on students, but there's a lot to pick. Uh, we are all learning, right? But this session is focused on students. So it's going to be focused on students. Spotlight is going to be on examples that students can relate with. However, everyone can learn. I see Naomi Kadri, 
currently studying law at Lagos State University. We are Lasso, we are great. That's how we greet. Eh? <laughs> okay, I like to see that. The light down says, I'm a law student of. Okay, let me just wait for that to pop up. Okay, I'm a law student of Oshun State of the greatest Nigerian law students. Great. I think I can relate with the like, greatest Nigerian law students because I studied law too. Uh, Sharif Dean Hamed, an undergraduate of biotechnology at the Federal University of Technology at Kure. Hmm. Hamed, how do you say, how do you greet one another? How do you hail one another there? Meanwhile, please let me know if you can see me and you can hear me clearly. Do you have any challenges, you know, listening to me? Do you have any challenges hearing me? Is my sound good? Is my audio good? Is my video good? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your feedback in the chat box. Okay, Fortunate Ogbaje, a graduate of Abia State University, Uturu Mass Communication, glad to be here. Christian, good news, says a final level student of the Department of Linguistics and Communication Studies of the University of, uh, I think I missed that. Okay, of the University of Calabar, Calabar. So you say Malabites and Malabresses. Did I, did I get that? Did I get that? We did. <laughs> okay, I have a friend who is from University of Calabar. Too, so I hope she's just in there. She's probably just healing so we hello we hear we greet tuna dove heart and just say hello to everyone i wish i could read all the comments here uh, however i won't be able to read all the comments but i see that from the feedback you can hear me and you can see me loud and clear so you're going to do something or i'd ask us to do something quickly as we move into the session proper if you know someone who is supposed to be here and is not here, send that person a text message and send the person the link to this session and say, you need to be here. If you know someone who would learn a lot from this training on public speaking, please tell that person that it's very important that that person is here now. So send a text, send a message to the people that you believe will learn. And as I mentioned, earlier on if there's someone around you who's not listening and tell them come and be a part of it you need to listen okay i see blessing Uyechi. i see omeni martins i see sekoni dairo radia okay from crescent university abiyokuta great 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 all right so a lot of introductions here thank you for being here my name is timi Badru. I am an award-winning public speaker, I'm a lawyer, I'm an event host, and I create valuable content for people using the medium of um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, a platform I use as well as Instagram and just social media generally. So this is what I do. I train people to be better public speakers. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you about my own personal story so that for me, when you see that I carry public speaking, like we say, I carry it on my head. There's a reason, there's good cause for it. You know, there's a, a reason for it. There's a story behind it. And I'm going to share that story with you soon. As I mentioned, if there's anyone that you believe should be here and is not here, please tell them to come. Tell them to be here now. They need to be here now. Okay, so let me get to my story very quickly. Now, some time ago, I was in the university and I remember... I remember one day, let me let me just start the story this way. I remember one day in particular, um, we're having a conversation in class and lecturer was teaching something and he asked for people's thoughts, people's opinion on it. And people had different opinion. Some people were for it, some people were against it and they were just expressing their views. And I was sitting there in that class and I had an opinion and I was so shy. I wanted to talk. You know when you want to talk, you want to express your thoughts on something, but you just, you're so shy, you just can't express yourself. So I was in that position. I wanted to express myself, but I couldn't because I was shy. And I just really wanted to contribute to the conversation. And I remember that, some, you know, I, I studied law, so it was a law class, and you find in law classes that it's very interactive. People are talking. It's okay to disagree with the opinion of someone. Just do it respectfully and share your thoughts but I was very shy and I couldn't do that. And that day, I just started to think to myself that 
I have so much in me and I can't put it out here. I can't express myself. Why? Because I am shy. What can I do about this? Then something else happened. I mean, this was what you, this was like a, used to happen often, me being in class and not being able to express my thoughts. But something happened one particular day. I remember that we had an election in our chambers. Law students understand it's like uh, they divide, you know, people into chambers so that they can learn more practically. So I was in one of these chambers and they needed, there was an, a position that was vacant, the position of a PRO of the chambers. And I just thought to myself that I want to be the PRO of these chambers. I, I want to contest for it. And in my heart, to be honest, I wanted to serve. Service was in my heart. I just really wanted to serve the chambers. But they said that we were going to have to come and come out and state our manifestos, you know, and people were going to vote for us. This is what we said. And I thought to myself, wow, now that's something. So I had people who, there was someone else, um, I think about three of us were running for this PRO position. So I remember someone coming out and just, you know, just before I spoke, this gentleman just went out and he just said so much. He was so eloquent. He was so articulate. He just said so much. And at the end of it, I thought to myself, what do I want to say? I mean, he has spoken so well. And at this point, I was quite shy. So how do I express myself? I thought to myself, but, you know, I went up, I said something. I didn't mean, I'm not sure I was as convincing as I could have been. Why? Because I didn't understand public speaking at that point. I was shy. And this was an opportunity for me to make an impact. This was an opportunity for me to, you know, service is an opportunity to make an impact. And it's also an opportunity for you to learn because you learn so much through extracurricular activities as well. So this was an opportunity for me to get involved. But I was shy and I didn't get involved. Um, I mean, I tried at least our A for efforts, but I couldn't put, my, put words well. I couldn't speak as much as I would have liked to. I wasn't as convincing. And that just goes to let you know that if you are in a position where you just heard about this training and you thought to yourself, ha, I can't even, in fact, I am so shy. In fact, I don't even go near the microphone. I, I can't even speak in public or anything like that. If you are in that position, I want you to know that you are not alone. I want you to know that I have been there. I wasn't always like that. I mean, as a child, I was that talkative child, but somehow I became the person who at some point became shy and I was in that position where I couldn't articulate myself as I would have liked to. So that just goes to let you know that you're not alone and we can find a solution to it. You can improve and you can become better. There's always room for improvement. Okay. Excuse me. Please let me know if you can hear me clearly. If you can still hear me, if you're still following, let me know if you can still hear me. Namdi, I'm sorry I missed your introduction. I had to miss a lot of introductions, uh, but hopefully at the end we'll have an opportunity to share feedback. So put it in and I hope that I catch your feedback. You know, there's so many introductions and if I read everybody's introduction, this will be the end of the session. Just reading introduction. I wish I could have, but thank you for calling my attention to it. So let me know if you can still hear me clearly. Please let me know if you can hear me clearly. Okay. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. I, I see your feedback that you can hear me clearly. So as I said, I lost out on that opportunity and opportunities to express myself and to make impact because I was shy. And I knew that something had to be done about it. And eventually something was done about it and something else happened. I went to the law school and in my law school, I had become a better public speaker. I'd become more confident. I was able to articulate my thoughts well. And an organization came into the law school and they were willing to provide some scholarship for an examination. And they said, whoever can quote a section of the law would get the scholarship. And I looked at myself and thought, hmm, Timmy, this section of the law, you can at least try. You can at least try. So I went out there and I tried, you know. And they said, oh, you, you, you missed up one word, but you made an attempt and you did it so confidently, so you're going to get the scholarship. So I got a scholarship because of public speaking. 
don't forget that I lost out on opportunities because I wasn't able to speak as eloquently as I could. I couldn't put my thoughts together as I would have loved to. And I was quite shy. I was quite timid at that point. But I got to a point where I was able to articulate my thoughts and I was able to speak eloquently. And because of that, I got a scholarship. I got a scholarship. Now, let me give you a little bit of background to why this scholarship was so important for me. I was in the law school and, you know, my parents were paying the law school fees and all of the things that come with going to law school, travel. I, I studied in Kano. My campus was law school, Kano campus. So I was in Kano campus and, you know, all of the flights, all, all of the, you know, every all the associated cost with staying there and coming home for breaks and all of those things. So I didn't want to put on them another burden of paying for a program or an examination. But somehow, I got this program free of charge because I spoke out. There were so many people at the end of this, um, at the end of this, when the school had given us the, or when the organization had given us the um, scholarship, I met people who said to me, wow, I knew it, I was just shy. And honestly, that's who I was before until I became more confident and I could articulate my thoughts and I could speak in public. Now, I'm giving you this example so that you see that public speaking has been of so much benefit to me. And again, because at some point, because I couldn't speak well in public, you know, I'd also lost out on opportunities. So maybe you can relate with that. Maybe there are people who have lost out on opportunities because they, they couldn't speak in public. Or maybe you are one of those who have gotten opportunities because you are you can speak in public. I believe that there are different types of people here. There are people who, on one hand, they they are shy. They are like I was in 100 level in school where I couldn't speak in public. They're those type of people. But again, there are people who, oh, they've been speaking, but they want to be better. Whoever you are, you know, whichever category you fall into, this is an opportunity for you to improve. This is an opportunity for you to be better. And that's why I put together this class because I realized that this was my own way of giving back to students. Um, I just looked back, I thought about so much and I just thought, okay, I know that my classes, uh, people pay for my classes. My, my People have to pay for my classes. I mean, within and outside the country, people pay for my classes, for my public speaking, coaching and mentoring sessions, for my, you know, for these sessions of public speaking. But I realized that I wanted to do something and it was my birthday last week. So I realized I wanted to do something for students that was free of charge, zero naira, zero naira. And that's why we put this together. So wherever you are, whether you've started to speak or you've not, I want you to know that this session is for you. And at the end of this session, you leave here a better person. You leave here, you know, being able to articulate your thoughts better and as a better public speaker. I am sure that you learned something. On that note, get your writing materials together. If you haven't gotten them together already, please get them together. Get your pen, get your, if you're noting it on your, you know, on your notepad, get everything ready and let us begin. Once again, my name is Tammy Badru. I'm a lawyer. I'm an award-winning public speaker. I'm an event host, and I'm really glad to be teaching today on public speaking. Now, I would like to ask us a question as we go into it, as we dive into it. Why do you want to learn about public speaking? What 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 reason? What is your reason? What is your motivation for wanting to learn? Um, it's, it's usually better to be one of the fastest fingers to type so that I can pick your comments. So please, right there in the chat box, let me know. Why do you want to learn about public speaking? Why do you want to learn about public speaking? Let me know. Okay, who's going to bell the cat? Who's going to begin? Who's going to begin with the feedback? Why do you want to hear about public speaking? Okay, Favor Ojo says, it is my passion. It is my passion. Fortune says, I am ready. I am ready. I'm ready for this session. Glory says, because speaking almost cost me a distinction in a course I stood a chance at. So it almost cost you a distinction. That means you probably lost out of the opportunity. I'm so sorry, Glory. I believe that at the end of this session, you will get so many opportunities, you know, and you'll think, <laughs> and you know, you make up for that one that you'd lost. Lady T says, I'm passionate. Chimamanda says, I, it will help me become more articulate. Rocky Bat says, so I'll learn to express myself better. Worry says, so I'll be able to defend myself anyway. Defend, okay? 
Taylor says, I want to use my voice to change and impact lives. Bibi Tayo says, I want to be able to articulate my thoughts and be an event host too. Okay, that's nice. Uh, Moyonua says, so that I can confidently communicate my thoughts. Thank you, Debbie. She says, happy birthday, happy belated birthday to me. Thank you so much. So that I can improve my communication skills, according to Vivian. Bolaji says, I've always loved to speak. I never get tired of speaking. However, I want to learn to articulate my thoughts better. Great. Divine says, to be able to stand out among my peers. And I hear Damilola say that, to be able to host people and communicate better. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Martins, I like your your feedback to competently deliver health talks. So you already know what you want to do. You're just using public speaking as a channel to do that. And that is so good. Amarachi says, I want to be confident when speaking and not lose words. Jim Dandy says, seeing others speak publicly intrigues me. And I always wish I could speak better. Well, this is an opportunity. And I believe that you would be able to speak better at the end of this session so just sit back fasten your seat belt and get ready to drive get ready to write as we go on so there's so many reasons and i believe everyone who is here has a reason for being here well of course people just forced you and said you must be here <laughs> but i'm sure that everyone who is here has a reason for being here now there's so many reasons to learn public speaking you see public speaking is like a tool that can help you to meet your different goals. You see someone saying that, I want to be able to deliver health talks. That's a good reason. Public speaking is that tool that will help you to be able to communicate your thoughts and to be able to do, you know, those things that your, your dreams, if your dreams is to, you know, impact people through health talks, public speaking is a tool to convey that. Now, public speaking helps you to inspire people. I remember sitting back some years ago and listening to the likes of uh, Mrs. Ibukwa Wushika, and I was so inspired. That is what public speaking does. Now, Mrs. Ibukwa Wushika, you know, does a lot of things. She used to be the chair of First Bank, and she, you know, she does a lot of great things, but she's not an event host, right? I'm an event host, and I hold, I speak, you know, I speak for a fee. Perhaps she speaks for a fee. I think she speaks for a fee. Maybe she does. But she's not an event host. However, even talking about her own life's journey inspires me. There's so many people who inspire you. I'm sure if I ask you who inspires you, you put a lot of people in, in the comment box. You realize that you've listened to some of these people over and over again, and you've been impacted. That is what public speaking helps you to do. It helps you to inspire people. It helps you to inform Thought leaders communicate through public speaking. You can inform. So let's say you are in a group now, and I say someone should come and you've worked on a presentation. Someone should come and defend it. What you would do is that you pick someone and tell the person to come and represent you. And the person will speak. And what that person is doing is the person is informing me, is enlightening me, is enlightening all of us. Public speaking is a tool to inform. Whether you're a lecturer, whether you are a banker, whether you are, you are, you know, a thought leader in any area, you can use the tool of public speaking to share your thought. So public speaking is an opportunity, you know, is a tool to inspire, it's a tool to inform, you know, it's a, a tool to impact people. You can impact people through public speaking. You can educate them. It's, it's also a tool to, you know, to market yourself. It's a tool to pitch yourself. You can pitch your business through public speaking. I remember just watching a pitch competition. I was hosting a pitch competition, and the lady who was the runner up, I watched her, and you know, it, it, it looked like a keen contest between her and another person. But the reason that I believe that the lady won this competition was because she was able to articulate her thoughts better than the other person. So public speaking is an opportunity to pitch yourself. Let's say you meet the richest person in Africa today and you have an opportunity to just, you know, that elevator pitch, to just talk about yourself in a few weeks. He says, okay, you know, I'm walking to my car, walk with me and talk. Will you begin to say, eh, 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 sir? Um, okay, sir. Let's say they say, oh, we, we, are, we are in a conference and they say, we have a few students here. Well, let one of them come and talk. And that has happened to me before as a student where I was in a conference with so many people, you know, professors and you know scholars in different endeavors and they just say they are, we have a few students here let a representative of the student come and speak well i'm not an expert like them but i, I can say a few words and say eloquently 
that is important. Vivian, Victoria says, we need it. I need it to survive. So you see that public speaking is a tool that we all need. Even if you're a medical doctor, you're an engineer, whatever you do, public speaking is an important tool. I hope you noted some of these points. You see that even from listening to your stories, listening to what you are doing, your feedback, you see that public speaking is important. Now let's get into this. I know we've started and what I'm going to be sharing now is called, I titled it The Commandments of Public Speaking, Seven Commandments of Public Speaking. So please put it back in the chat room, Seven Commandments of Public Speaking. I'm going into it fully. We've taken time to start with my story. Well, before that, we did a brief introduction, but then we started with my story where I showed you, and I believe I inspired you with my story. And now I'm telling you about the, or just before this, I told you about the importance of public speaking, and I'm moving on to tell you the seven commandments of public speaking. Seven, just seven. There are so many commandments, but just seven commandments of public speaking that I want to share with you today. Now, as I tell you this, if you believe that there are people who should be a part of this call, who should be a part of this session, send them a text message. Send them text messages and tell them you need to be here. This is the link. Join in now. Now, if you are listening in and you haven't subscribed to this channel, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I'll be dropping so many important videos on these channels. I'll be dropping so much information on this channel and you should subscribe so that you get access to it as quick as possible. So go and hit the subscribe button as we proceed. Go and hit, if you haven't done that, I'll give you one minute as I read the feedback from others to quickly go and subscribe as we proceed. I see gifts writing it back, the seven commandments of public speaking, Lady T Media, Ikotun Taiwo, hi Taiwo, Daniel Adekunle, Temi Lulua, Victoria Udo, Irene Akwaka, Sonia Pablo, Noah Flavor, Noah Favor. I see a number of people putting it back in the chat box saying the seven commandments of public speaking. Great, 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 great. So I believe you have subscribed now. Now let's go into it. First commandment, number one, if you're noting, this is something to note very quickly. Number one, prepare, prepare. That's the first commandment of public speaking. Seven commandments of public speaking. And we're starting with prepare. Okay, great. Daniel, thank you for echoing those words back. Prepare, very important, prepare. Thou shall prepare, you shall prepare. Make sure you prepare, however you like to put it, just prepare. Now, when I talk about preparation, what does that involve? Preparation involves a number of things. Preparation, for example, means understanding the subject matter. If you're asked to come and speak about something, you want to take time to understand the subject matter. You want to take time to understand the expectations of the person who is inviting you. You want to even find out who am I speaking to? Because that is preparation also. Finding out who am I coming to talk to? Am I talking to students? Am I talking to lecturers? Am I talking to retired professors? Am I talking to engineers? Because your language, your example, so many things would differ if you are talking to different people. So the people you're talking to will inform what, how you speak, will inform the examples you use. So if you notice, I started off with an icebreaker, asking everyone to tell us their names, um, tell us their school and their course of study and how they hail one another in the different universities. This is relevant because I'm speaking to students, at least the majority of people here are students and this public speaking session is for students even though some non-students are joining in. Now, can you see that if I was speaking to other people, if I was speaking, for example, to you know the Institute of Bankers and I say, tell us you know, which school you are joining, which school you are in and tell us um, your course of study. They would wonder, why are you asking for a course of study and for a school? Is this relevant? So by preparing, it means understanding who you are talking to. That is part of it. So I call it the research based on subject matter and the research based on audience. So subject matter research, audience research. Prepare. Understand what you're talking about. You know, I heard the story of someone who was uh, asked to speak about 
person was asked to speak about something and we said, how can I speak about this thing when uh, there's another important topic which is to be touched on? <laughs> and it was an examination. And the, the, the examiner gave a, a, a powerful score, an F, because the person didn't prepare for that examination. And, you know, it's singular. Just imagine if your school, in your school, they invite someone to come and speak to you about academic excellence for, you know, there's a meeting and they bring somebody, come and inspire them and talk about academic excellence. And then the person gets there and the person begins to teach you something entirely different. The person begins to teach you something entirely different that's not even for students. And you begin to wonder, what did we ask you to come and teach? What are you teaching? Preparation. Preparation, that's important. You know, sometimes people just do what we call Ogboju. They didn't prepare, so they don't, I beg, let's just teach anything. So it's important for you to prepare. Now, yes, I can see Daniel writing this back in the chat box, um, letting us know what I've said, saying that preparation could mean understanding the chat box. Thank you, knowing your stuff and knowing the audience. I'll put that on the screen now. Thank you, Daniel Adikuli. So that's what preparation means. Understanding the subject matter it could mean understanding the audience as well. Make sure that you prepare. Very, very important. Make sure that you prepare. Always prepare. Now, preparation also involves scripting, writing your script, making a note of what you want to share. That is part of preparation. Finding out what you want to share. Finding out what you want to say and then making a note of it. Like it could be your script, for example. Now, for example, let me give you an example. Whenever I want to speak to people or I want to host an event, I script my opening lines. When I don't have enough time to script my opening lines, I make a mental note of my opening lines. That's organizing my thoughts. So that's a part of preparation. And someone said that when your opening is good, chances are that the rest of your conversation will go well. That is part of preparation, scripting your opening lines, organizing your thoughts, knowing, okay, this is how this will go. This is what I will say. This is how I'll begin. This is what will come next. That is important. A lot of people have so much to say, but they don't organize their thoughts. So what happens is that because they don't organize their thoughts, they end up saying so many things and being confused. So if you, for example, say the first thing I want to teach is preparation. Next thing is I want to teach an X, Y, Z. It means that you have a plan. With your speech, don't just go with the flow. You could make a mental note, but make sure that you, you, in you, even if you are not writing it physically, I recommend you write, but even if you're not writing physically, make a mental note of what you want to say. This is how I want my speech to go. This is how I want it to be structured. However, there are cases where there's no opportunity to prepare because it's impromptu. There are speeches, uh, just in case you were going to ask, what if I didn't even know about it? Impromptu speeches test our residual knowledge. So what happens with that impromptu speech? For example, if you're part of, um, what's the name of this organization? A public speaking organization. If you're part of, let me use our own organization. If you're part of Voices and Faces community, and I believe that you should be a part of Voices and Faces community, go ahead and follow us on LinkedIn and be a part of us and on Telegram as well. If you're part of Voices and Faces community and we're having a session, perhaps like this, and we ask someone to speak about something. On the spot, we give you a topic and it's an impromptu speech. At that point, you don't have an opportunity to prepare. What you could do is to quickly make a mental note of your speech. So if you give me a topic now, you didn't give me before, I could say, okay, what do I know about this topic? How do I want to begin? I'm not saying these things out. I'm not even writing them, but I'm making a mental note. Just make sure that in your thoughts, you are organized. And if you have an opportunity to put pen to paper, have a script. That is preparation, right? Okay, let me know if you have followed. Let me know if you've been a part of it. Let me know if you have listened. All right, I'll be reading, reading the chat box now. Let me know. Preparation, first thing is preparation. First thing is, pre if you have questions, please note them, we'll get to them. Preparation is the first thing. Preparation. Okay, so organizing your thoughts. Yes, all of that comes on that preparation. Great. Daniel says I'm following. Justine says I'm following. Preparation is. I think Daniel is most active. Or maybe I'm not seeing the other. I'm seeing everyone, you know, putting in 
the comments, but I really like how you are phrasing it and putting it back and echoing the thoughts. Thank you, gift. I, I, I see some people's name over and over again. Godwin Asuko. Great. So preparation is important. Prepare, 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 prepare. Tell yourself, I will prepare. I will prepare. Preparation is not easy. Research is not easy. I host events. And sometimes, I remember a particular day, I was hosting an event and I needed to go and stay in a library all day or for a large part of the day just researching. And I came back because, I mean, this was a new field to me. and I needed to understand it. And I came back. So that's part of preparation. When you see people go and shine and speak brilliantly, there's a lot of research behind it. So prepare. Second thing, and please note it, second thing is practice. 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 Please note it in the chat box. Practice. 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 Very important. It's important that... Okay, so I see someone saying, well, you can prepare and not be confident. Okay, what advice do you give to the person? So this is what we're going to do. Let's hold on with the questions till we get to the end of it. Just note your questions, and then at the end of the session, you can drop the questions. You may find that some of the things that you want to ask will already be answered naturally in the course of this presentation. So please hold on, and then at the end of the presentation, if your question has not been asked, please go ahead and ask. So practice, practice, practice. There's so many ways to practice. You can practice in front of a mirror. You can rehearse in front of other people. You can record your audio, which is such a difficult thing to do, but you may need to do it. It's important. You can record your own audio. You can record your video and watch. That is practicing. That those are opportunities to practice. You must continue practicing. Another way to practice is actually doing it putting yourself out there. Now, one of the ways I, you know, remember my story, the transition, I shared two testimonials. I first told you how I lost two opportunities and I told you how things got better. But you would wonder the between, the behind the scenes, what happened, what changed everything. One of it was practice. One of it was practice. And this is something I'm constantly doing. I practice, I practice practice and I become better. So after I realized, you know, that I, as a public, as a person who wanted to speak in public, that I, I wasn't doing it well, I was shy, I was timid at that point. You know, after I realized that and prayed, I realized that I needed to embrace little platforms and practice with them. So platforms like my fellowship, platforms like, you know, small groups in classes, you know, when we're divided into, into small groups in classes, being active in those groups, you know, those little platforms, they were important for me. You know, they were opportunities to practice. So another way is to put yourself out there. Like Daniel says, put yourself out there, practice. People often meet me. They often send messages to me and say, Temi, hmm, I want to be a public speaker and I want to, you know, speak on international platforms like you. I want to, you know, just host events. I want to host events for the presidency. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I am inspired. Uh, you know, people say things like that. And honestly, I feel that I'm happy that you have such great plans and dreams. And I believe you can. But one thing I say to them is where you are at the moment, what are you doing with it? Are you practicing where you are? Or do you think that it's such a little platform and it's not good enough for you? You are in a student environment. Are you practicing there? When I was in school, I started to host events from my 200 level to 500 level. I studied law. So for that period, I was hosting. At some point, I was the official host for, you know, for events in my faculty. So I hosted for my faculty. I hosted for my hostel I hosted for a few organizations outside the school within the state. And, you know, those are opportunities to just practice and become better. That's what you need to do. You need to find platforms now. They may not look big, but those are things you need to leverage. This, they, they, you are leveraging them. They are something you're stepping on to get to the next point. You are practicing. If you learn to speak before five people today, maybe next week you're speaking before 10, then 20, then 30. Practice, practice, practice. So be better. The third thing I say is do it afraid. Do it afraid. Very important. Do it afraid. 
I, I take myself down memory lane now to when I was I started to speak in those platforms. And please write it, do it afraid. Third commandment. I'm teaching on the seven commandment of public speaking. Let me drop that in the chat box. Seven commandments. Do it afraid is so important. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Hmm. You will get there and maybe <laughs> chances are that your heart will start beating really fast. Chances are that you remember that you are hungry. There's so many things that could happen. You know, stage fright is not limited to a few people. It happens to the best of speakers. Some of the best speakers I've met have felt stage fright. It's really about what you do with it. It's not about whether we feel it. Even now, sometimes I'm hosting events and I'm like, Oh, Lord, help me. So do I feel it? Yes. It's what I do with it that matters. So do it afraid, even when your voice is shaking, even when you feel stage fright. Let me ask at this point, how many people here have ever felt stage fright? And what are some of the symptoms that you feel when you begin to feel stage fright? Tell me some of the symptoms, please. Let me know. Physical symptoms. I want to be sure that I'm not the only one that feels stage fright sometimes. Please let me know. What are some of the symptoms I'd like to read from you? Some of the symptoms. Okay. Some of the, okay, Timothy says, I stammer. Okay, so when you begin to feel stage fright, you stammer. Sheung says, my voice gets shaky. Hmm. Victoria says, rumbling stomach. Tim Nolua says, you might feel frightened, but that's what matters. Okay, you are quoting me, but I want you to tell me your own symptoms. Gift says, stammering, being nervous. And you know, I'm very human like you. And I will tell you some of my own symptoms, to be honest. Sweaty palms. I see someone saying, shaky and stammering. Okay. Martin says, my hands begin to shake. Moyolua Babalola says, running stomach. That's what you feel hmm, suddenly. Suddenly, I mix words up. That's what someone says. Divine says that. Sweaty forehead, you see. Otto Emmanuel says, I feel like using the convenience. Imagine. So these are serious heartbeats. Hmm. Someone begins to feel their heartbeat so fast. It feels like the heart is about to jump out of their body. Um, someone says, use of repetitive words. Um, <laughs> an unorganized posture, according to Bolaji. Sweaty palms and my fingers hurt. Wow. My voice completely ceases. That's another person's feedback. Amarachi says, I forget some things. Tim Lulua says, my heart races. Smart says, my heart beats and running stomach. Cold feet, according to Anyechi, Anyelechi, Amadi, Victoria Figo. Cold feet. So cold feet, literally, like your feet get cold. So these are examples. So let me tell you, Mike. For example, when I begin to feel stage fright, um, my heart beats fast. And then... I just feel, you know, some movement in my stomach. <laughs> and it's usually funny because I know that I'm fine. It's just the stage fright, right? You know, and I just know that I'm okay. It's just stage fright. And sometimes my heart is just beating so fast. Like, really, what is happening here? And, you know, something I usually say this, that there are certain things that hmm, when they happen with stage fright, it just becomes worse. For example, cold. When you're in a cold weather and you're already feeling nervous, you just begin to feel... <laughs> yours will be worse. Like, you will just be shaking, literally. Just shaking. Well, for some people, I hear that some people, they wouldn't be shaking. And you're shaking not just because of the AC. You are shaking because of the AC and the stage fright. But some people say that it's not that for... They begin to sweat even when the AC is on. And you are like, is everything okay? So that's another symptom. But it all goes to show that there's so many symptoms of stage fright. However, what what's important is what we do about it, even though it happens to the best of us. So do it afraid. I just want to encourage you. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Go and speak confidently afraid. Go and talk. Go and do it afraid. So that's the third thing. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Be confident Believe in yourself. If you need to affirm yourself and tell yourself, I've got this, I'm strong and beautiful and powerful, you know, I, I deliver thoughtful messages, I create value, say that to yourself, but do it afraid. 
don't chicken out don't don't go out to say i'm not doing it again finally i'm not doing it again no do it afraid now the next point i'd like to say seven commandments who is noting it for me do it afraid thank you fawaz ayomide let me put that right there fourth thing are you ready for the fourth thing are you ready are you noting these things for yourself as well are you noting it for yourself in your writing materials the fourth thing that you should do is fourth commandment of public speaking your dictionary shall not depart from your presence your dictionary shall not depart from your presence first thing prepare second thing practice third thing do it afraid fourth thing your dictionary shall not depart from your presence. In other words, get a dictionary. Get a dictionary. Whether it is, you know, it's so easy to get a dictionary now on your phone. You can download apps that, you know, you can even get audio dictionaries. And you can really learn. That's so important for us. Public speaking has to do with communicating. And you're communicating in a language. Whatever language you're communicating in, you want to be good at it you want to learn at it i hear people saying things like oh english is not our language now you know for those of us who are you know, not native speakers you say oh, it's not our language okay your language is that what you're communicating in do you communicate often in your language if that's what you used to communicate in then become better at it and then when you speak english learn to speak it better now i agree with you that it's not our native language but this is what we speak at official events this is what we speak um, so it's important that you learn to be better at it. So you find that, especially if you're listening in from Nigeria, you know that we're colonized by the British and our English language is British English. There's the British English, there's the American English, right? Well, you find that with a lot of networking, uh, mobile, uh, a lot of networking, moving around and things like that and interacting with different people, migration, you find that, well, even if you if you are typing in you know your lap on your laptop, you may find that you are typing British English and the laptop is correcting you and it's putting in American English. So we interact a lot with American English. So the dictionary is very helpful if you if you choose to speak British English to guide you. This is how to pronounce this word. This is how to become better at it. Let me tell you something. My friends and I often banter about. English language and we often correct one another and you find that we become better at it you know I at some point I had a flatmate who I would say something and she would say uh is that really it then she'll check it and she'll correct me then she'll say something and I'll say is that really it and we'll correct one another and we were becoming better we are becoming better even till now when I listen to people and I hear new words I note it and I go and check the meaning you know, not to make fun of them and say, ah, uh, what's that person saying? You know, some people would be in gatherings and they're just making just of the person who's speaking like, ah, uh, you know, <laughs> things like that. Not, not for that reason, but because I want to learn. That is very important to me. Language is a tool to communicate. I, I want to be better at it. It means that if you, if I hear you say something in a different way, pronounce the word in a different way, I want to learn how to be better at it because I realize that this is not our native language. So, we need to keep learning. We need to keep learning. You know, English is, <laughs> you know, when you say box, the plural of box is boxes, right? So you see that it's not as straightforward as as it's, it looks logically, right? So the plural of box is boxes, right? Or what's the plural of ox? Is it oxes? No, is oxen, right? So you see that you need to consult the dictionary at the end of the day. If you if you say that the trick is to put S in everywhere, you'll find that there are places where S wouldn't apply. So consult your dictionary. I remember hearing somebody pronounce the word resource, R-E-S-O-U-R-S-E, -S -E, resource, as in what we will call resource. And I thought, why did you say resource? Then I realized that Oh, I went to the dictionary, audio dictionary, and I found that, oh, Cambridge Dictionary showed me that there's the American pronunciation and there's the British pronunciation. So what she was doing was the British pronunciation. So I wanted to learn. So I'm open to learning. You find that we all can be corrected, we can become better. But it's important that you are intentional about learning. That's why I said your dictionary shall not depart from your presence. That's the fourth commandment. Keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. The fifth commandment, the fifth commandment is 
watch and learn from others still talking about learning still talking about learning now if you are here that means that you are even doing something about this you are learning from me at this point right i want you to also be deliberate about learning from other people thank god for social media thank god for youtube that has so so many channels so many opportunities to learn from different people learn how people present if you admire people who speak in certain ways go and listen to them i'm not saying you should try to sound like them but you can learn a lot about public speaking from them and you can become your own authentic self just by learning from others so learn from others watch others as an event host i'm always delighted to listen to other event hosts i was recently in a meeting at transcop with you know and you know it was it was an important one and there were so many people but i was i was just looking at the mc i was just focused on the master of ceremonies to see how is this person doing this because i want to learn from him i want to become a better master of ceremonies at the end of the day i picked one or two things i said oh i can do this better i can improve on this for myself i can say oh, I, and i said okay i was doing this before but i can do this better and i, I walked up to him and said oh thank you for sharing he's a senior colleague so I talked to him and said, oh, this is what I learned. This is. And, you know, funny enough, he asked me, what is your feedback? What do you think I can do better? And he was honest with me. So I said, okay, well, I think this was done this way. Maybe if it was done this way, it could have been. And he received the feedback graciously as well. So be open to learning. Be open to learning. Watch and learn from others. Let's go over the commandment from one to five in the chat box now. Let's go over the commandment from one to five in the chat box. First thing is prepare prepare right so please drop it in the chat box drop it in okay this is what we're going to do the first person i don't know if we have enough time to do this but drop it one after the other one two three four five let's see who can drop five without being interrupted five without being interrupted one two three four five i can see wisdom saying i watch tedx events to learn i'm happy to hear that be open to learning okay great prepare prepare so you put prepare practice do it afraid i think it would be impossible to do that don't, don't let me set you up for something you can't do because people will interrupt you but anyway drop the five things we have learned so far prepare practice do it afraid your dictionary should not depart from your presence remember that remember and watch and learn from others five things i have said so far five things i've learned so far just two more because i said seven commandments i just want to give you things that i believe you can walk with and if you start to honestly practice these things you will see a change you see that you become a better public speaker you see a difference in everything let me tell you something when i started to speak in my class i remember the day it was a class I can't remember the particular course, but I remember the topic. We're talking about fair hearing. And I raised my hand and I contributed in class. I remember what I said. I said, fair hearing is divided into two parts. There's the Nemo Judex in Kososwa and there's audio autorem patem. And I went on to explain it. After that class, I, I say this, you know, and I, because it, it was a landmark event for me. After that class, my classmates called me and said, my friend, he said, ah, oh, Temi, because we, we had resumed for 200 level. And he said, Temi, oh, wow, I see you were really reading during the um, holidays because, you know, you really learned so much and the way you were speaking in class today. And I just looked at him and I said, no, I knew these things before. I didn't go home and learn something new. I knew it before. The difference was that I was practicing these things that I've shared with you. So I had so much knowledge, and I believe there are people like that. You know so much, but people don't even know that you are that brilliant because you often don't speak. Even when they ask you to contribute, you are shy, you are scared. I was in that position. So they didn't even know that there was something in my head until I started to speak. So it's important that you practice this. If you go and do this number one to five, there will be so much change. There will be a transformation. But let's talk about the remaining two. There's still two more I want to share with you. Practice, prepare, practice, do it afraid. The dictionary should not depart from your presence. Watch and learn from others. The sixth thing is be open to feedback. Be open to feedback. Be open to feedback. This is so important. Remember I asked you to practice and I said you can practice in front of people. You can practice with other, you know, in the presence of other people. It's important that you 
are open to feedback. It's important that people are able to tell you, okay, you know what, you can do this better. You should do this better. Because there's so much counsel. There's so much safety in good counsel. There's so much safety in counsel from other people. There's wisdom in receiving feedback from people. People can tell you. I remember when I was in school, I used to do host events for, you know, for the school and for, you know, little organizations within the school. I used to do things like that, as I mentioned. And I remember my friend told me, there's a particular posture you have when you are speaking. And it's something I used to do with my hands. And then he told me, and he, you know, I laughed about it, but I watched it. I was careful. I received that feedback. Uh, you know, he teased me about it. But even I miss everything, laughing and, you know, just joking because we joked about it. I still took that feedback and said, this thing, do I really do it? Do I want to do it? How can I stop doing it? That is receiving feedback. You know, so I, I hope that we are people who give constructive feedback and we give feedback to people kindly. But some people will come to you and they wouldn't even give you the feedback nicely. Just find a way to sift the message from the way it was communicated, from the channel. Find a way to find the message. This is the message this person is delivering to me. So find a way to get it. Be open to feedback. And you can ask people, how did I do? Let them speak. Some people say, well, you did excellent. Okay, that's good. Ask them, what do you think I can do better? Let them tell you. Be open to feedback. Very, very, very important. Be open to feedback. Don't just say, did I do well? They say, yes, you did well. You believe yourself. Okay, how would you learn? How would you do better next time? Ask for feedback. Ask for feedback. Ask for feedback. Ask for feedback. Ask for feedback feedback ask for feedback and the next thing i said seven commandment right seven commandment please write be true to yourself be true to yourself now i'll explain what i mean by be true to yourself i usually tell people when i coach them that when they start speaking they should pause and they should speak slower so that people can hear them and they should gather their thoughts they should not be in a hurry but then I realized that some people, the message they need is that they should speak faster because they speak too slow and they bore their audience. So as a person, you need to be, be true to yourself to be able to evaluate. Self-assessment is important to be able to say, this is where I am at now. This is the problem I have with public speaking. This is the problem I have with public speaking. You should be able to do that. You should be able to look back and say, mm, this is, I speak too fast. I need to slow down. Or I speak too slow. I need to speak faster. This is important. Be true to yourself. Self-assessment. Self-evaluation. You know where you are at. You need, it's not even just speaking fast or speaking slow. There's so much. See, as a speaker, you need to be able to read the room. You need to be able to also look inward to know this is what I need to do to be a better public speaker. So to yourself, be true. Where are you at as a public speaker? Where are you at? Are you at a place where you need to speak faster? Are you at a place where you need to do more research? Whatever it is that is a weakness, now you need to find a way to understand it and work on it. So be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. So those are the seven things I'd like to share with you from my heart to every student and non-student who is joining in. Seven commandments of public speaking. There's so much more that I could say. For example, bonus point. Note it under bonus point. Read the room. Read the room. When you're speaking to people, read the room. It's important. Um, just find a way to find where people are at. Find a way to see what they're saying. For example... If I am invited to come and speak, and I notice that as I start speaking, people are yawning, then I get an impression that they are tired. If I start speaking and I notice that people are going out, maybe they are hungry. I, I, I try to interrogate that. You know, if I start speaking and I notice certain things, it can be indications of so many things. So you need to be able to read the room. That's a bonus point. Read the room. For example, if you get in now and people have been listening to a speech from morning till evening and you are the last speaker, your, your session is for 6 p.m., they started by 9 a.m., they've been listening and learning, listening and learning to about 10
participants. Maybe before you start your session, you want to tell them to stand up and do an exercise. Maybe you want to introduce an icebreaker or a game or something that is fun for them. That, excuse me, that is reading the room. Another bonus point is relax. Relax and rest. Relax and rest. Relax and rest. You know when I said do it afraid? It's important that you relax and rest. It will help your nerves. Just calm your nerves. You know, that could mean getting some rest physically. When you have a speaking engagement in the morning, early in the morning, you want to rest that night so that you are not tired. You know, fatigue is something that you don't want to be dealing with. You don't want to make sure that you affirm yourself. That's relaxing as well, body and soul. So those are two bonus points. Read the room and rest. You know, at this point, we have come to, uh, it's two minutes past 6 p.m. Nigerian time, West African time. And I've shared two bonus points, plus the initial seven commandments of public speaking. Seven commandments plus two bonus points. And I think this is a good place to, you know, just take a break and listen to your questions. What are your questions? What questions do you have? Please drop your questions in the chat room. Let's see how many questions we can take um, before we have to draw the curtains of this session. But please put your questions in the chat box. But before you put your question or while you put your question in the chat box, please let me know which of these points resonated with you let me know which of them truly i know if i ask you how was it i'm i know and i will ask you how was it i'm sure it was impactful right let me know i like to see your own words how was it actually let me start with how was it for you but then again tell me which of these points resonated with you which one resonated with you and what will you do differently i really want to hear i mean it's been over one hour of just sharing with you and i want to know which one resonated with you which one truly got to you you know when you had that moment where you know that ah this one is speaking to me be true to yourself which one resonated with you what are you going to do differently and how was it for you how was this one hour of learning seven commandments of public speaking for you so please drop that in the chat room while people who have questions also drop their questions in the chat room. Now let me run to the chat room. I love to read from you. Okay. Okay. Someone says the part about using the dictionary is what got to the person. Murphy says the prepare point resonated with me. Okay. Now, I see a question here. How do I avoid repetition of a particular word when speaking? If I'm always repeating one particular word when speaking, for example, I say this was amazing, 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 amazing. And I love the word amazing. I do. I actually like the word amazing. Um, how do I avoid repeating that word? First thing is be conscious of it. And that, I think for you to even ask it means that you're conscious of that word. So you deliberately find synonyms for the words. So instead of saying amazing, Find other words. What can I say? This was interesting. This was insightful. This was eye-opening. This was beautiful. This was lovely. This was a great experience. So find synonyms for those words and use the synonym. So that will help you. So I'm glad that you're conscious of it. Okay. So read the room is, is, is the one that got to delight. That's the one that resonated with Godwin. I see Godwin saying that Noah, uh, saying that read the room is what got to him. Noah says, Read the room, the expressions of the audience is what did it for me. MNAK Amarachi says, do it afraid. That point resonated with me. Okay. Taiwo says, how do I read the room? Okay, read the room is just an expression that says be observant, be observant, be observant. That's what it means. Read the room just means be observant. Observe people. If you're talking to people and they're sleeping, you're already reading the room. You're, you're, because you are looking at the appearance of people you can tell that what they're feeling and you know sometimes it's virtual so you can't see them physically but you can tell from their engagement you know you can tell from their engagement you can ask questions you can do polls and you can see feedback from people so that's a way to read the room so read the room just means observe it's just an expression that means observe people thank you deborah for stopping by thank you for the question Gift says, great value added so far. I'll put this into practice. I love to see this. I love to see people who would go ahead and do something about it. Okay. Daniel says, the bonus point. Okay. Daniel says, the bonus point. So it was a bonus point that resonated with you. 
that is great. I believe everything was helpful to us, but I just want to know the particular one that you are going to act on, even if it's more than one. Tell me, what are the things that you're going to act on? Okay. Okay, I, I see a question from Ulua Shewo says, how do you speak with precision, not just in public speaking, but even in communicating with people generally? I find that my words are always all over the place. Now, the first point I said is prepare. I remember I said, under prepare, I said, you should organize your thoughts. That is a key to speaking with precision. Knowing what you want to say is very important. And when I say what you want to say, I don't mean knowing everything about the topic. For example, I want to come and speak on public speaking, right? <laughs> well, nice repetition, pop speak on public speaking. But I want to come and speak on public speaking to you. And I just have less than one hour, 30 minutes to communicate with you. I can't tell you everything I know about public speaking in one hour, 30 minutes. Do you know that? I can't tell you about, there's so much experience, so much to share with you that I could go on and on and on. And I recommend you follow me on LinkedIn, follow my, um, follow my community, Voices and Faces. And please, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, my name is Timmy Badru. So follow me. I'm constantly sharing helpful articles, videos, and insights there. And on YouTube, subscribe to this page and follow. But I can't teach you everything in one hour, 30 minutes. And I'm conscious of time because I also know that you have things to do. Today's Saturday. You have to get ready for Sunday. You have to do a lot of things. So I can't teach you everything in one hour, 30 minutes. I can't even teach you everything I know in one day or two days. What I can do, however, is to organize my thoughts, to find out which ones will be relevant for you and which ones do I want to touch on. So I decided I was going to teach you seven commandments. And then if I have enough time, I will teach you bonus points. That is organizing my thoughts. So that I didn't get here and begin to say, ah, I have so much to teach you. Where will I even start from? Where will I even start from? Mm, maybe prepare. I'm not even sure it's prepare. You know what? Let me start with practice. You know, I'm not even sure it's practice. And let me, let me, ah, oh, let me tell you something. There's so much, there's so much. That is, that you can save that energy and you can be more concise when you actually organize your thoughts so by organizing my thoughts i knew i was going to come and start with my own story and let you know that see i've walked the same shoes that you are in or i'm probably even in the shoes that you are in and then i go to the commandment of public speaking but not before i touch on why do you need public speaking that's what i did i just organized my thoughts and said okay i will touch on this touch on this i'll touch on that because we don't have all day that is what happens in communicating with people. Know what you want to touch on. Some people, you give them a platform to speak and they come and at the end of the session, they now say, ah, I'm even on number one since I've not even been able to finish everything. It's just number one. There's so much to say. In fact, I feel bad. I wasn't even able to touch on others. What if you give time to all the points so that you're able to touch on each of them? That is how to avoid being all over the place. So please, Organize your thoughts. Generally, organize your thoughts. And you could start with scripting and you could also go to making mental notes of things you want to say. Babalola Esther says, the commandment about doing it afraid resonated with me because I'm always scared to even try. So I'm glad that that one resonated with you. Do it afraid. You know, having said all these things, you make mistakes. Yes, you will make mistakes. I make mistakes, you know, sometimes. It's important. I, I recently shared that I was hosting an event. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't such an error as to communication, but anyhow, it was a mistake. I, I, I was hosting an event and um, I think this just happened last year, right? Just last year. I was hosting an event and somebody's name and title, I, I called the person, I think I didn't put the title, you know, let's say somebody's chief and you go and call the person Mr. You know that? a number of people don't like that or somebody's professor and you go and call the person doctor the person says what do you know who i am i'm a professor it can get to people so i made a mistake with the title and when i was told i corrected myself i said oh, apologies please this person is addressed as this this and i corrected myself so we would you would make mistakes right mistakes are a part of life the reason we have erasers at the back of our pencils is so that we can correct the mistakes that we make, right? The reasons we have the tipex is so that we can erase the mistakes we have. So 
there's that backspace key on your laptop so that when you make mistakes, you, you can correct them. So even with all of these things, you need to do it afraid because having said all these things, you may get there and begin to stutter. Don't stop speaking. Continue to speak. Do it afraid. And I'm glad that that resonates with a number of people who are in here. I hear, how can I articulate my thoughts? Because I think it's a major weak point. I mentioned again, this goes to the point about noting things down. Note things down. That's very important way to articulate. After you've done your research, note down. Write. This is what I want to touch. This is what I want to say. If you need to write this full script, like presenters do, write your script. That's how to articulate your thought. Someone says, how can I join Voices and Faces community? We are on LinkedIn. Just go on LinkedIn and search for Voices and Faces page. Um, if you find it difficult that way, you can just go on LinkedIn and search for my page, Tammy Badru. Follow me on LinkedIn. And then right there on my page, you'll see Voices and Faces as one page I created. So go ahead and follow Voices and Faces as well. So Voices and Faces on LinkedIn, also on Telegram. You can also follow us on Telegram. Dobby says, thank you so much for this powerful and impactful session. It was beautiful and enlightening. One thing that resonated with me is being true to myself. Dobby, thank you for your feedback. I love how you put it so well and you just were just able to concisely put it here in the chat box. Thank you so much. I am honored. Okay, I hear someone say, Godwin says, good evening, ma'am. My name is Godwin from Faculty of Law, you knew you. My question is, does understanding in a school radio station help to improve one's public speaking too? Yes, it does. I, I was in the school's radio station and I learned so much. Yes, it does. It's an opportunity. But don't forget, Godwin, you're in school. Don't forget that you're in school first for the academics. So try to strike a balance so that your grades are not affected. And that's I was in the school radio station and I was presenting a show. So when I got in there, I told my parents, ah, I'm going into the radio station now, but I can assure you, I would not make sure, I'll make sure my grades don't drop. And thank God for his grace, my grades didn't drop. But I also prioritize my academics. I prioritize my academics. That is very important. So if you go to the school radio station, that's good, but prioritize your academics as well. Don't take on too much. You don't have to be there every day. You can volunteer and just have a time frame with which you're there. Okay. I see Abimbola saying... Okay, law student from Olabisi in Obanjo University. Hi, Peaceful says, hi, Temi. I've got a question on reading the room. When reading the room, someone can get distracted. How can I overcome distractions that come with an uninterested audience? Hmm, that's such a great question. Yes, so if you read the room, for example, and you see that they are bored, it can be discouraging. But that's one way to look at it. It can be discouraging, but would you rather peaceful would you rather you didn't look at their face you didn't even know they were bored you just focused on your speech and you started to deliver it into thin air without looking at people don't forget that communication is incomplete until you are it has you know reached the receiver so if you didn't look at them and know that they were bored in the first place you wouldn't even know what to do to get them interested that's what reading the room does so if you now say it, it can be distracting because you may you may then become discouraged and say, yeah, these people are not even interested. Let me just stop. But if you didn't even know and you were speaking, you won't know they are not listening. You continue speaking. At the end of the day, nobody's listening. Your communication was ineffective. What was the point? So what you can do is see it as an opportunity to become better. When you read the room and you find that people are all interested, see it as an opportunity to get them interested. And see it as a challenge. Maybe they are not, I mean, it doesn't even have to do with, maybe it may not have to do with you. It may have to do with the speaker. But sometimes maybe it's just that they are tired. Maybe it's just that they are bored. Maybe they just need to stretch their legs a bit. They've been sitting for hours. Maybe that's the time to tell them to get up and start an exercise. You know, maybe that's the opportunity to tell them, okay, meet meet two people within the hall, when you, you tell people to meet people and network, they're usually excited. Maybe that's a time for you to, I've had to, at events, I've had to suggest to the organizers as an event host, what if we brought the lunch forward a bit because people are hungry. And when people are hungry, you know what they say about that? They can be angry. 
So even if you're speaking English and you're not speaking grammar, they're just looking at you like, okay, 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 okay. So I had to suggest, why not let's bring lunch forward a bit so that they get lunch. And then it came back with renewed energy. That's what reading the room can be. So look at it as an opportunity to be better, to take feedback and know what to do next. But you may find people that, well, if it is a general thing, then that speaks to the audience. But if it's not a general thing and you just find one, two people, then maybe they're just having a bad day. Even if you say something interesting or funny, they're not laughing. Their face is just looking straight. They're just serious. Well, you may want to take your face off them and just know that believe in yourself and do it afraid either ways and not pay too much attention to them. So you see some people, they are in a, even in a comedy show, they, everybody's laughing around them, but they're just looking like, what's she saying? What's she saying? Uh, and maybe in their heart, they're happy, but they're just not showing it. So don't focus on those ones, especially when it's not a general feedback, but pay attention to the general feedback. Chioma says, do it afraid God to me. Sometimes I just give up because I, be I become afraid. Chioma, don't give up. Don't give up. It's very important. Okay. Hi, Taiwo. Taiwo says, for me, it is practice. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you for joining in. Okay. I hear someone say, I've been inside, I have I have inside been shifted to the upper stairs through this session. Thank you so much, ma'am, Tammy. Okay, I'm glad that the session has been insightful for you. I'm so glad the session. Murphy says, what is the difference between prepare and practice? Wow, Murphy, I, you must have missed out on the initial part because I saw an earlier question uh, I, was it you or someone else that asked? But prepare is, I hope that we can get this video anyways so that people can watch a replay at the end of the day. I really hope that people can watch a replay. But prepare in this context is do research, get ready for it. Preparing can mean practicing actually because you can, in fact, all of these things can be termed as preparation. You know, you know, pr practicing, watching and learning from others, that can be preparation. But in this context, You'd recall that I streamlined, prepare to doing your research, you know, finding out about the subject, finding out about the audience, organizing your thoughts, and then practice could even involve stepping out with little platforms. Practice could be going to speak before five, ten people. That could be some level of practice. You're looking to speak before thousands of people. At this stage, you can speak before five. You can speak before ten. You can speak to yourself in the mirror. Use your, you know, your recorder and your video and listen to your audio. That could be practice. So that's the difference, you know, in this context between preparation and practicing. Okay. So I see gift echo. Do I have any questions that I haven't responded to yet? Do I have any questions? Mary Fato Imbo says, I'm passionate about the art of interviewing like you, like being a talk show host. Is it possible to specialize in this without being an MC or conference moderator? Can I be a talk show host without? Yeah, there are people who are on TV and who are talk show hosts and they don't moderate conferences. Yes, you can, dis you, can you know, create your own path for yourself. Okay. Okay. So I said feedback from Deborah here. I think she's responding to someone and say, look above their heads if they are uninterested. Yep. At some stage, I would say, look above people's head, but I wouldn't, because if we're going to, and I think we should go there now, another bonus point, if you're still here, note it for public speaking is nonverbal communication. If at the stage where you are still getting comfortable, maybe, you know, you're just learning, I can say, okay, it's okay to look above your head. But at some point, don't look above people's head because when you look above people's head, you're not communicating with them. People like verbal, non-verbal communication that involves looking into their eyes. I'm speaking to you and I'm looking into your eyes means that I am speaking to you. Let us talk. Apart from cultural practices where they find it to be disrespectful. But generally, when you're looking, when you are talking to me and you're looking away, you're looking, you know, looking up, looking down, you're looking everywhere but at me, I start to think that you're uncomfortable. Or maybe I am making you feel uncomfortable. So it doesn't send a good message. So at the initial stage, maybe when you are shy and you know you're just trying to get started, I understand if you need to look above their head. You know, at that point where you're doing it afraid. But as you begin to be better and you continue on this journey, don't don't aim to look above people's head. Look at their faces. 
Look at people. You're speaking in the hall. Let your eyes move from one pe from one person to another and look around and maintain eye contact with people. That, that's important. So nonverbal communication, you can note that as part of the bonus point as well. What you do with your eyes, what you do with your hands, what you do with everything. Everything that doesn't speak, that's not speaking with your mouth, how you communicate with it. Padmore says, how can we join Voices and Faces community? We are on LinkedIn and we are on Telegram. You can just search for us. And um, at the end of the session, don't worry to everybody that registered. If you didn't register, go to that link for registration and go and register again so that we have your details and we can communicate with you afterwards. We'll send you a link to join us on Telegram and on, and on LinkedIn as well so that it's just easy for you to click on it and be a part of it. Does that work? Does it sound good? Okay. Someone says, do it afraid. Thank you so much. This was insightful. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Thank you, patience. If you are. Thank you to everyone who has been with us. Um, it's 22 minutes past six here, West African time. We started at five or one or two minutes past five, I believe. And it's about 22 minutes. I, I just want us to just begin to close. If there are no questions, are there more questions? Is there any questions I may have? I didn't answer i didn't respond to okay i'm a boarding event host from alayinka um i see others use the tag mc but i particularly dislike it is it is it wise for me to build a brand by just sticking to my name okay i think what you mean is when people will add to their brand MC, your name is alayinka so they will call themselves mc alayinka and um and that it will just be their brand. Well, it's, 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 it's those people's style, really. If you call yourself MC or Laika, you want people to know that, oh, at first, when you think of me, you think of an MC. I mean, I think that works for them. If you don't want to do it, that's also fine. So there are people who do it. There are people who don't do it. People know me as Temi Badru. But they don't. They know I MC. But I, I do not put, I usually don't put MC Temi Badru in front of my, you know, MC in front of my name. I call MC Temi Badru. But I am Temi Badru and I MC right so it depends on your style martin says i have an issue of looking at a particular person's face when i talk and when i try to look around to get to everyone i kind of falter okay so martins you can start with one-on-one -on -one conversations with people try that first of all you find that when you're speaking to people generally do you look at their faces i don't mean when you're talking to everyone in public start with one-on-one -on -one conversation you know there are some people some of my friends i realize that when they're talking to you they don't look to your face they look everywhere else but at you and that's a great feedback to share so that's something that you may want to work on start to look at people in their faces when you're talking to them one-on-one -on -one. get you comfortable with that and when you go on stage try looking around for people because you can hear people say to you go on you can even from listening to people you know and just watching their faces and looking maintaining eye contact with them you know what you need to do better so that's important. So I would recommend that you start looking at people one-on-one -on -one before you even go to public speaking or to speaking to them. Okay, what's the difference between being open to feedback and taking and rest? What's the difference between six and seven? Six is be open to feedback. No, six is be open to feedback and seven is um, be true to yourself. Be open to feedback is listen to people. People, someone asks, in fact, before they ask, go and meet them. What do you think about what I said? What do you think about my presentation? Do you think it was helpful? What do you think I can do better? That is listen to feedback. Now, be true to yourself. I mean, I've listened to the feedback. Or maybe nobody even told me. By myself, I can identify, be true to myself. I can assess myself to say that. From this, I speak really fast and I need to get slower. And some of the times, it's not even someone, you, if you listen to your audio, sometimes you can even get this assessment by listening to your own self. You can get this assessment from others, but you can get it from your own self too. You should be able to identify, these are the things that are areas of weaknesses, these are areas of strength, and I want to improve on them. And just be true to yourself. Because I wanted to tell you to take a pause when you begin to speak. And people need to pause when they begin to speak. Some people need that. But then I realized that some people need to speak faster. Some people need to, you know, you need, some people you tell them that, oh, 
do more with your hands when it comes to non-verbal communication. So use your hand to pass across your message. But for some people, you need to tell them to reduce what they do with their hand because it's distracting. So you need to be true to yourself to see which works for you. Ac you know, you should be able to assess yourself. Do you understand, Fumlayo? So that's what I was trying to pass across. So someone says, how do I see the message from the channel um, when people are giving feedback? Some people can be mean. Yes, people can be mean. What I just mean by sifting the message from the channel is, even though this person has said this in a way, you don't like what the person said to you. Can you still find that? Is there any truth in that message? Someone said, oh, let me give you a simple example. Someone said, in fact, you were just saying rubbish. And you're just saying rubbish, speaking fast, saying rubbish. We didn't even hear you saying rubbish. Did the person have to say you were saying rubbish? Is that disrespectful? Is that unfair to say? Maybe, yes, you, you don't like what the person said. But the person said you were speaking fast, saying rubbish. Can you pick that part of speaking fast and say, was I speaking so fast that nobody could understand me? That is safety in the message, you know. It could be difficult because you would be offended at the person say, why were you saying I'm saying rubbish, you know? But you can see the message and find out what you can do better. Do you understand? Okay, so it's 27 minutes past and I didn't want the, I don't want this session to go beyond one hour, 30 minutes. Now, this is what I would recommend. Videos like this are available, shorter videos are available on my LinkedIn page. You can follow me on LinkedIn. My name is Tammy Badru. Uh, let me just write my name. In fact, the name of this channel is my name. So if you're not on LinkedIn, you should be on LinkedIn. Follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me on Instagram. Yes. Are you on Instagram? Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook at Tammy Badru. Tammy Badru, Tammy Badru. On LinkedIn, I'm Tammy Badru. That's my name. And follow this channel. Just subscribe. Before you leave, make sure you subscribe to this channel. So that when you see there, when there are other videos, when I share other videos, you can learn from them and you can help them. But before I go, please, in one word, describe this session for you. I want to see your own words. Not, not trying to use another person's words, your own words. How would you describe this session? Um, I'm so glad that we've been able to have this session because it has been on my heart to do something for students for such a long time. I'm so grateful to God that we're finally doing it. And I can just tick this one off the boxes so but let me know from you let me hear from you i want to hear how would you describe the session in one word okay thank you i see godwin saying awesome yes i'm we're going to send you a, a message after this so you know how to follow us you know how to stay in touch and also you know how to ask questions or send your feedback as well but for now just give me one word daniel says profound gabriella says enlightening timmy Nurua, my namesake says great Gift says informative, insightful again from Temi Luluwa. Denny Kerr says insightful, peaceful says fire. <laughs> I like the fire emoji. Eye opening, Aliu from Laya says eye opening. Vivian says fantastic. Okay. Someone says, when will you do a session for professionals? Professionals who are on this call, I'm glad that you've learned a lot already. <laughs> the session for professionals would be coming soon, but that might be paid. So get ready. This one is students now. We did this one free for students. But the one for professionals <laughs> would likely be paid. But just look out for it. Uh, look out for sometimes I'm hosting for organizations who are offering scholarships to people. So please look out for those things on my pages, across social media platforms. If a question is all amazing, not just amazing, all amazing, that's another one. <laughs> He's creating his own, uh, or she's creating her own. Baba La Esther says eye opening. Debbie says educative, powerful, powerful, nerve relaxing by Taiwo. Thank you. Thank you. I see Taiwo say clarity of first steps to take helps to be less overwhelmed. I'm, I'm glad to hear this feedback from you. Thank you for joining. Pressure says helpful. And uh, yes, thank you. I can't read all the feedback. It's coming in so fast. Um, Dandy says stimulating. Thank you so much. It's 6.30 now. I've got to run. I'm so glad that you enjoyed the session. Keep an eye on my social media pages for what's coming next and for you know how you can just be a part of sessions that are coming next. Thank you so much. My name is Tammy Badru, and I've had such a wonderful time just sharing with you. Till we meet again, have a lovely evening or maybe morning or afternoon, wherever you are joining in from. Just enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.